do something, anything, anything that catches your eye, anything that interests you, because that something will often lead to something else. You Mm -hmm. will meet someone new and that person will uh, teach you new things. You know, it's always like a chain reaction. So I think it was Buddha who said, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. listening to Inside Acting, a podcast dedicated to demystifying the inner and outer game of success in the entertainment industry. I'm Trevor Elgott, and coming up in episode 279 today, the third and final part of my conversation with Ana Carolina Valverde and Brian Rupenkamp, otherwise known as Those Annoying Vegans, all about building a platform in a mostly post-acting life. And in part three today, Anna and Brian share what spiked their YouTube traffic, how they balance their activism with non-activism work opportunities, uh, a thorough debunking of the scarcity myth, what our real job as artists is, where they're headed next, and a bunch more. All of that coming up in episode 279 right now. So here's a great way to master the studio and performance techniques you need to work on camera and to do better self-tapes. It's called Camera Ready You, and it's been created by VO2GoGo's David H. Lawrence the 17th. Now, David, you guys know David. He's a seasoned TV and film actor, and in Camera Ready You, he's going to share all the knowledge he's gained working on camera. Auditioning and working on camera can be kind of deceptively hard, but David's put together a very special report called the top five mistakes people make on camera and how to fix them. It's absolutely free. And to get it, all you have to do is text on camera. That's all one word. O N C A M E R A text on camera to four, four, two, two, two on any smartphone or messaging device. Now you probably have unlimited text messaging on your phone, but standard messaging rates may apply. So What are you going to learn in Camera Ready You? Well, to give a very brief overview, you're going to learn how to set up your studio, how to set up your lights, your camera, your microphone, how to self-tape on-camera auditions, how to master business presentations, video podcasts, online instructions and lessons, do marketing videos, how to walk the red carpet, and a bunch more. Basically, you're going to learn how to shine on camera and on the red carpet. So if you don't know which camera to use or you don't know which lav mic or boom mic to buy or you don't know what to do with your hands or your eyes, that's a big one for me, no worries at all because Camera Ready You has got you covered. You can become a better on-camera actor and auditioner with Camera Ready You. Again, be sure to pick up that top five mistakes people make on camera and how to fix them report by texting on your smartphone on camera to 44 Two two two. That's all one word on camera to four four two two two, and get ready for camera ready you. So hey everybody, it's just me uh, for this little segment here. Although AJ and I did uh, have a great time in Yosemite National Park, and we actually recorded a little IIP segment. For this episode, we were just kind of blissed out, zenned out uh, on the campground one night, and we thought, hey, man, let's let's record a little podcast thing. So we did. We we report directly from nature, where we had no cell phone signal and sort of what we had been experiencing over the course of the, the day or two that we were there, uh, hiking, just taking in the majestic gorgeousness of Yosemite. So that's coming up in just a minute. But before we get to that, want to give a big shout out and welcome to our newest member, Ian Elliott. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Looking forward to seeing you inside the membership. And speaking of the membership, we are in week two of Julia Cameron's The Prosperous Heart. It is a self-guided personal finance course, I guess you could say, but it really deals with a lot of the emotional and spiritual blocks that so many of us carry around regarding money and abundance and prosperity. And I know for me, even just being two weeks in, it's been a real uh, eye opener. I'm learning a lot about how I relate to money, stories I've brought with me um, from childhood into adulthood that, you know, aren't serving me. 
we're, we're so often run by a six-year-old's mentality because so much happens to us when our brain is forming in those first five or six years that then gets sort of locked in. We carry it with us into adulthood without even really recognizing it a lot of the time. And it manifests perhaps no more and more clearly than in our relationship to abundance, money, what we feel we deserve, what we feel is the correct way the world should work, things like that. So it's been pretty cool. We're only two weeks in. So if you're thinking about joining us, now's a great time. There is a specific thread for each week. So you can jump in anytime and see exactly what that week is focused on. And uh, some lively conversation. It's been pretty cool. I've been in there every week, sharing my experience, commenting and supporting others and their experience. And we'd love to have you guys join us. Also inside the membership, Catherine Grant Suddy. You remember her from her kick-ass Iago monologue short film that she created. It's about 12, 13 minutes. She posted a, a secret link to that inside the membership. And I think she's probably still looking for feedback, but it's freaking awesome. And uh, she also offered a really great response to Derek's email about actors with autism that we responded to in uh, in the last episode. So uh, there's a link to that specific thread inside the membership in the show notes for this uh, this episode. But of course, you'll have to be a member to actually access it and sign in. But uh, it basically amounts to a director adjusting his style once the actor does a very brave thing and comes clean to everyone in the cast and crew. So it's a it's a big win 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 type thing going on. But it's a, it's a pretty cool response uh, that she uh, that she shares. Uh, that by the way is uh, in the comments on the episode two seventy eight thread, which you can find in the membership. Also, uh, Brian, longtime listener, supporter, uh, awesome person uh, for the podcast, shares a, a kind of a timely article from the New York Times uh, in the Gabrielle Carteris Part 2 thread. He comments on that uh, specific post. And this article is basically why we should be accustomed to saying no more often to things that aren't a hell yes. As the saying goes, if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. And that's a practice, but this article actually offers a few kind of key insights as to exactly how to do that. You can find it if you search for it on uh, thenewyorktimes.com, but uh, we have a link directly to it in our membership. And it'd be pretty cool if uh, we chimed in and shared our thoughts on that. I, I posted a little, a little aha moment on that. And then lastly, Ali posted a very powerful essay or thought on navigating sexual interest from men in the entertainment industry. She posted this over a month ago, so f forgive us, Allie, for not uh, sharing it sooner, but it opened my eyes to a couple things as well, just what women have to deal with and some thoughts on how to deal with it. And a lot of our female members uh, chimed in and shared their story and their experience and their stories and what's worked for them and what hasn't. So that's worth checking out as well. You can find that uh, in the uh, membership as well. And then uh, lastly, we're still doing our hashtag Working Wednesday tweets. So if you are working on something cool, whether you're reading a script, writing a script, auditioning, getting ready for an audition, coming back from an audition, whatever it is you're doing, shooting, rehearsing, uh, shoot us a, a little photo or a description and tag it with hashtag Working Wednesday on Twitter, and we will be happy to retweet that and just build up the community. So with all that said, here is AJ and I blissed out in Yosemite. We're in the Western Sierra Mountains in the Sierra National Forest. This is uh, this is the kind of place I came a lot as a kid to, to go camping. I spent a lot of time in Yosemite. And I got to, I was very humbled and honored to bring Trevor to his first ever Yosemite trip today. First ever time going to Yosemite. What was that like? It was, it was something, man. It was really, really something. If there's... There's a real energy about that place, and it, it's such a gift. I was telling you this earlier, it was a real gift you know, that you brought me here. <clears throat> well, how about you? I mean, how would you describe that park? You're, you're much more familiar with it than I am. I loved the, the, what you said about there being an energy to it, because I, uh, I, I feel it. I physically feel it when I'm there. I feel connected to the source of some energy. Um, you know, when people talk about the universe, source, God, 
you know, something bigger than themselves, I feel connected, I feel more connected to that there than anywhere else or, or any other time I've ever experienced even something remotely close to that. And I said to you yesterday, I, I put word, words on it yesterday in a way that um, I've never been able to before. And I said, I think part of the reason why is because, you know, Julia Cameron talks about filling the well in the artist's way and, and allowing our artistic selves, our artistic child, our right brain to have an opportunity to, to build up images to then be used in our creative process. And <clears throat> when you're in a place like that, when I'm, in, when I'm in that place, I'll speak for myself, when I'm in that place, my, my all left brain processes are interrupted. Like I, I, I can't help but move into a, 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 a mm. right brain because... You were saying that yesterday when we were listening to that podcast on the way up. Yeah, it defies logic. Yeah. yeah. It defies... It just short defi- circuits that yeah. whole, <laughs> whole analytical part of your brain. Yeah. Just shuts it down real fast. And you're like, I wonder how big that mountain is. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't right. matter. Right. <clears throat> Who fucking cares? Look at it. Like you said, it's like plugging back in. Mm. I, think you, I think you said it that way. Yeah. Instead of unplugging, it was like plugging back re- in. Yeah, re- recharging. Recharging my batteries, if you will. So so let me ask you this, AJ, because you've done this quite a bit. Yeah. And this is something you continue to do. And um, You were showing me the ropes as we were getting set up at, at camp yesterday, and you were showing me sort of the things that you've accrued over the years, you know, the shoes and the tent and the sleeping bag. And, you know, I was kind of putting together my list. Why would it be important for an actor or somebody who's a creative person to go through all the trouble of spending all that money and making reservations and driving all this way to set up a campsite somewhere like this? Why? We talked about it being rejuvenating and recharging and plugging back in. But... Why go through all the trouble and the money of doing that when you could just do something simpler like, I don't know, go for a walk in the park? Why? What's the benefit of doing something like this on a regular basis as an artist? Well, I mean, I, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that there is a majesty to being out here with no cell phone reception and in the middle of nowhere with the beauty that is surrounding us that sort of interrupts our left brain, our analytical brain, um, and allows our artist brain to play. So, you know, that's one. And then two, and forgive me for doing this, but I almost want to tweak the question a little bit and say that it's not just about it being beneficial as an artist, it's about it being beneficial as a human being. You know, I would recommend this for anyone. Uh, especially if, they, like you said, if they live in a city or if they're constantly surrounded by the concrete jungle, as it were, and they don't have access. I mean, you know, in New York, people, people, for, for as much as certain people say that New York is this concrete jungle and, and really harsh and difficult to, uh, to live in if you don't like concrete and you don't like cities and you don't like uh, being surrounded by people constantly and you don't like being underground for that matter you know you have the ability to get out into nature there's this area I've talked about this on the podcast before there's this area in the northern the north uh, west corner of Central Park called the North Woods where if you walk deep enough into the paths in, in there uh, you can't see the city and you can't hear the traffic. So there are opportunities there for sure. But the more time that you spend, the, the more, I feel like the more beneficial. You know, mm. we talk about meditation a lot on the podcast. You know, we, you do it, I do it. Um, we had Michael Balshan on recently. Like, we, we talk about that, that practice quite a bit. And, you know, there's that, somebody asked some some great thinker like what if you don't have time to meditate or someone said like if you don't have time to meditate for an hour meditate for two hours <laughs> yeah. what is that yeah who said like that? that someone someone said that you know if yeah. you don't if you don't have time to meditate for an hour then you need to meditate for two hours. meditate for yeah. two hours right yeah. um 
And that's a, actually, I wish I had started my answer to your question with that, because mm. that is the answer. Mm. It really is. Like, if you don't think, you know, you have time to spend two days out camping, you need to go camping for four days and really disconnect. And, I, I, you know, we had a couple blips of cell phone service on the road, and a couple of emails came through, one from my manager, one from my agent, and some other stuff, logistical stuff. And I felt, I kid you not, I felt the, like, stress of, like, what am I missing? And that's, that's insane. Nothing is that important. Nothing. Truly nothing is that important. I mean, except for maybe the people you love. To be able to be, be reminded of that and not be able to respond and have to take a few breaths mm. and look around me and look at you and see, watch you experience all of this for the first time. You know what's been what was really fun? I mean, we've only been here for one night so far, and this is our second night, and we're out of here tomorrow. But <clears throat> Yesterday we went to, what was the name of that place, that grove? Nelder Grove. Nelder Grove, where they have these giant sequoias mm. that are between, like, several several hundred years and like three thousand years old a piece and we were just sort of walking through this this mile loop and uh <laughs> there were a few times where a few times in this trip already you've you you specifically aj have seen a tree growing out of the ground with like two main trunks sticking out Huh. And you've said each time, like, wow, it looks like some, somebody was, like, stuffed into the ground, <laughs> like, and there's their legs sticking out. And what kind of caught me about that is, is you've, brought, you've said that, I think, three times now this trip. Every time we've seen it, you're like, oh, look, there's another guy stuck in the ground. <laughs> and it's just kind of fun because when else is our mind that playful? Reminds me of, like, laying in the grass, staring at clouds, like... That one yeah. looks like a rhinoceros. That one looks like a turtle. Yeah. But, I think, like, you know, this kind of thing gives you, affords the space for your brain to reconnect with what it's like to be childish, I guess, but in a good way, a childishly creative person again. Mm. And um, you can't help but take some of that back with you. And if you do this on a regular basis, I can't imagine that you would walk into a room for a reading and not, and not feel... Uh, some playfulness, you know, some some essence that you that you brought with you. You know, we've been out here again like for a day and a half now, and I can already think one of the most important things I think I could do in my life is have another one of these to look forward to in just a few months, and just have that be a constant thing. As soon as I get back, plan another one, just to have that to look forward to, to know that that's on the other side for those times when. I get enrolled in the bullshit. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you know, some people go on vacations to other countries, and, you know, it's all about just disrupting the the, the norm, and um, I think it supports with, you know, awareness, too, and consciousness. If one were to get stuck in the rut of the routine, it takes something to interrupt that, um, you know, and for different people it's different things whether whether they do meditate two hours a day or have a yoga practice or go camping or go travel to, to other countries or all of the above I want to take a minute just to listen to this give our listeners a chance just to listen to this and be in this moment I want to thank you again for bringing me out here with you. Yeah, man. Anybody listening wants to take me camping? <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. I'll go. Where, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs>
So you can probably hear in our voices how freaking great that was. We were totally just blissed out, zenned out, and we actually spoke, we recorded for a good 30 minutes, and I just pared it down to, to just that segment that you guys heard, but it was pretty cool, and uh, we had some some great bro moments <laughs> there in uh, the wilderness, hanging out, taking in the majesty and the beauty of Mother Nature, and uh, I would love to hear what this inspires in you, if anything. Uh, the older I get, the more I realize how important it is to either unplug or plug back in, depending on how you look at it, on a regular basis. And like I just said, have something to look forward to every single, I don't know, quarter at the very least, every single 90 days. And I've already got my next trip planned. And um, I definitely feel far more equipped to go camping uh, on my own if I ever choose to do so. Although we had such a great time. Why would I do it on my own when I can just call up AJ and I know he'll be game for it whenever. So thank you, AJ, for a great experience. Uh, that was one part educational, one part just total zen, awesome artist brain stuff. And I uh, would really love to hear uh, what you guys think. So uh, all that said, here is part three of my chat with Anna and Brian those annoying vegans about building a platform in a mostly post-acting life. And and yeah, we get into some of the vegan talk in this, but it's a really pretty cool journey that they've been on. And all of these principles, everything they talk about can easily be translated or transcribed over to a scripted web series. So if you're not into the activist thing or that's not your, your phase of life right now, that's it's not about that. That's just happens to be the context for this conversation. It's really about how do we do this smartly and effectively and serve the greater uh, good, I guess, <laughs> the uh, serve our audience with what they're looking to hear while we get to kind of scratch our own itch as well. So I hope you enjoy this. would love to hear your takeaways. Here it is, part three of my chat with Anna and Brian. Enjoy, and I'll see you on the other side. videos and you guys have really been at this for mm, over a year now how long was it before you started seeing some real momentum and growth with your with response with i'm sorry with respect to your viewership you know i have to hand it to i have to really thank mike yeah mike, mike the vegan he commented well first the first time I first think time we, we saw a spike in yeah. viewership and subscribers he commented on our lemon parfait video <laughs> yeah um and granted i mean we'd been watching him for a while we we were commenting we watch like every single one of his videos we just love facts and science i wish i could have been to veg fest with you guys to meet him I, i'm a big fan of his as well there's a Long Beach Veg Fest in, in July. There's a, the barbecue one. Have a heart. Yeah. There's a ton this year. It's crazy. Eat, drink, drink vegan. vegan. So he, he commented on the, one of your videos, and that was a, a catalyst. And then recently, you know, since Veg Fest, and we've met so many people uh, through him, uh, Happy Healthy Vegan, who we met for the third time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was from Plant Based News. Yeah. Uh, um, plant based companion. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's kind of. Yeah, Slab. Yeah, yeah. You're just building the community and, and people, you know, they want to help you. They want to, we want to help each other because it, this is the great thing about YouTube is that we love giving other people shout outs because it helps the cause. You know, if, yeah. we, if we find someone with a good message, we want to share that message. We're like, oh, watch, watch this video or watch that video. Yeah. Um, and thankfully, we've had people who have. Uh, sort of, you know, spoken about us on their channels. Mm -hmm. And that's helped us a lot. So you guys clearly have a, a niche. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, there's a, it's a cause based. It's not a scripted web series, I guess is what I'm saying. You have a, you have a sort of built in audience. You have people you're trying to reach. The message is very clear. You have a, a rich and vibrant community of people who are all focused on the same thing. If you were to offer some sort of advice for somebody who wanted to build a, a, a platform for themselves, but wanted to go the sort of traditional scripted web series route. Based on what you've learned with your channel and the success you guys have been enjoying, what, what 
to, what could do you think would translate to to something like that in terms of advice you might be able to give? What what ends up happening in the vegan community is you have the same interactions. <laughs> like uh, it's yeah. like we talk to other YouTubers and and like especially this past weekend we we hung out with so many vegan <laughs> YouTubers. Yeah. And we will all just share stories like people say the same things. People give the same pushback. People have the same yeah. arguments. It'd be and fun to do like a, a spoof, some sort of spoof video or something like, you know, because we like Brian was saying, yeah. we get the same like, but what, but bacon, but boohoo bacon. Mm-hmm. Or, mm-hmm. Or, yeah. But where do you get your protein? I mean, the typical, the typical questions, the typical pushback that we get, you know, it's funny because I always wonder, oh, do, do people think they're being original <laughs> or are they really asking, yeah. you know, how do you? live without cheese or uh things like that so you know that's that's one idea is to take sort of those those common take those real life moments and and put them down Mm -hmm. you know just like any other movie script is usually based from someone's real experiences if Mm -hmm. if you experienced love or heartbreak or what you know any of the other myriad of things that movies are about and inspire about the human condition scripted but also funny oh yeah is like yeah we see so many medication commercials <laughs> i All know it's time. ridiculous Honestly, sit down at even at, like, like we were at the gym months ago i mean months ago because i remember counting them and i think yeah. in a half hour span of time i counted over 15 uh, <laughs> yeah 15 ads for different pills to fix things that can easily be fixed with a whole foods plant-based diet easily yeah but there's no and money in, there's no money in broccoli I know, right. but I just have these ideas of like, cause there's one commercial I love where the lady's like, I, I have borderline high cholesterol. I can either worry about it or do something about it. <laughs> and then she pulls out a garlic pill and it's like, I have this vision of a commercial where the lady's like, so I went vegan, of course. Like, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like do all these commercials with things that people think they either need from an animal product or a pill and some of them are just like blatant lies like like what what is that cholesterol one where it's like when diet and exercise aren't enough and i'm like what how how can diet not be enough i know i'm like just keep feeding those lies to people so you have no god knows how we survive till now without your magic pills yeah. You know, so it's, it's, wow, wow. Or the egg glands best where they're like, some eggs just taste better, better <laughs> eggs, egg glands. It's like, I don't even know what that means yeah. because <laughs> they're not legally allowed to say that eggs are healthy in commercials. Right. Yeah. You've heard commercials. Yeah. yeah. They're not allowed to say it. Yeah. yeah. And so they just have to find other things to say. God, that loopholes cracks me up and is terrifying and tragic no pun intended. all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. No pun intended. <laughs> So, so from all the success you've, you guys have enjoyed, it sounds like there's a lot that you could pass on to, um, somebody looking to build a platform as well as scripted or unscripted, uh, you know, reality based or completely, you know, pre written, I guess. But I mean, everything from like the, the gear you guys have talked about to the workflow you've worked out to the release schedule, to partnering with other, other people in the YouTube community, all of that stuff you think would, would translate pretty well to somebody listening who's thinking, you know what, I want to start something like this. This journey comes with so many positives. Once you start getting into it, you will begin to understand it better. You'll have your moments, uh, you know, you'll mm-hmm. you'll get upset, you'll get frustrated, but that happens with about just about everything in life. But it is interesting, it is fun, it is I know this is exactly where I was always meant to be. And uh, you know, I'm a little eh, I'm still young, I guess, but a lot of people <laughs> a lot of people uh, find the the meaning of life <laughs> Only by four months. Come on. <laughs> a lot of other a lot of people find the sort of where they're going much earlier in life, you know, and I feel like I've always been changing and looking for the, you know, what am I supposed I start I started making jewelry at one point thinking that I was like, I need to do something creative, but I don't know what, you know, and this sort of opened up all these new doors. So, yeah, I say explore it, explore it. Everybody has something unique to bring to it. Whether you're an artist, whether you you like researching, whether you like medicine, whether you like, uh, I mean, social justice movements and the science, the psychology behind that history. You you start you want you see a movie maybe like I did, mm-hmm. you know, Back to the Future, and I wanted to be Marty McFly, and it's like that translates into something eventually. I want to be an actor, you know. And how do you get into acting? Well, it, or how do you get into guitar playing, or or playing the drums, or singing, or anything, you know, anything in life. There comes a point where you're just going to have to, like, pick up a pair of drumsticks and sit behind a kit and try it out. 
you know, and with acting, it's like find a play, find a, you know, something. But the beauty of creating your own content, like you said, like translating this into a YouTube platform is like you're in control. And all you have to do is take that first step. Yeah, if I were to say, if if, if I were to kind of boil that down in a nutshell, I, I say if do something, anything, <laughs> anything that catches your eye, anything that interests you. Because that something will often lead to something else. You mm -hmm. will meet someone new and that person will uh, teach you new things. You know, it's always like a chain reaction. And, uh, you know, I think there's a, was it Buddha or Confucius? I think it was Buddha who said, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Mm. I love that. I, I have one big question I want to ask you guys before we get to our final two questions. And, and this is something I've, I've thought about a lot and that actually has been a major influence in how I, how outspoken I am about this issue, which is very um, important to me. But I noticed, Anna, I think it was on Facebook, it must have been Instagram that I saw this, that you actually turned down a voiceover job because it was for a leather company. The client of my client was a leather company, so I, I turned down both essentially. When I started, when, when I got with my agency um, for commercial acting, uh, I went without a year of booking anything. I hadn't booked a single commercial yet, and they had signed me a year prior, and I was like, oh my gosh, they're gonna drop me, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? Finally, I booked my first commercial, I was vegetarian at the time, and it happened to be a Jack in the Box commercial. And uh, at the at the time, I wasn't e I wasn't in into activism. I was just sort of learning the ropes uh, of this new lifestyle. And I took the commercial, and I was honestly, I was very happy, and I was excited, and I was like, oh, thank goodness, I'm not in trouble yet, you know. And you know, obviously, looking back, I'm like, I'm so glad that's off the air right now. Um, but uh, so it was about a year ago when I finally asked my agent. So they sent me, <laughs> they sent me an IHOP commercial, and uh, I actually took the screenshot of the email I sent them. Uh, I said, uh, yeah, it was exactly it was May 31st uh, last year, and I said, hi, dear, you know, insert blank agent. <laughs> I wanted to ask you if it would be possible to leave me off any fast food auditions, anything where I might be required to eat meat or dairy. I've been meat free and dairy free for seven years now and compromising this for auditions is becoming increasingly harder. In any case, I tend to do way better at the com comedic stuff. P.S. I will still honor the IHOP audition tomorrow because I had responded. I had sent this email as a response to the IHOP audition. Somehow getting that IHOP audition was, I don't know, it was like the culmination. I was like, all right, that's it. I can't do this anymore. And I said I would still honor the IHOP audition because you know how agents get if you cancel an audition – they go on and on about, you know, why didn't you book out? You should right. have said so before, da, da, da. So <laughs> Murphy's Law, I booked the IHOP audition. And uh, at that point, I was vegan. And I said, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? And we've just started our channel. I'm a complete hypocrite. I At that point, I, hadn't, I didn't feel like I had a choice. So I, I did it. I did the commercial. And luckily, it didn't air. But ever since then, I have not been sent out on any more fast food auditions. I think they forgot because two weeks ago or so, they they sent me a McDonald's one. And I, now I had the email to refer to. And I was like, hey, remember that email a year ago? Yeah. But yeah, uh, today I turned down a voiceover audition for a, I think it was a footwear, leather footwear industrial m manufacturing company in Mexico. So, and I just said... No, I can't do this. I, I don't support leather. Leather, And you'll be surprised. They, she was uh, very supportive. Yeah, this, this, yeah, the screenshot you shared, she was very gracious. But I'm wondering um, if, if you have experienced the other side of the spectrum when it comes to letting your activism and, and feelings about that bleed over into your professional work. Uh, no, I mean, not really. Hmm. Um, I mean, the, my agents never personally responded to the email, but I think, I mean, they'd never really do to most emails, just they, they read them and they move on because they're so busy. Uh, but no, I, I have not, I haven't, I haven't, you know, because when you go to these auditions, they always say, are you okay with eating this or that? You know, someone might have allergies, someone might be vegetarian, someone might be vegan. So they want to make sure I would go to these auditions and, 
my justification at the time was, well, if I, that's the thing, I was always justifying it. And I was saying, okay, well, someone's going to book it, it might as well be me. Or, well, if I book it, I'll donate half of my, of my, of what I get from it, have my check to an animal sanctuary. No one else who books it would do that. But then once we got our YouTube channel, I started, that's not going to work. I'm the face of those annoying vegans. And I'm, we speak against fast food so much Mm -hmm. now that that's just not going to work. Fast food is, and, and let me tell you something about the IHOP shoot. We were sitting uh, with our food in front of us, which, by the way, I have never seen so many eggs and so many sausages and so many waffles in one plate. I do not know how they call that a side. Um, <laughs> but they, we had an improv, you know, like, ooh, mm, this is so delicious. Mm, yeah. yeah. And one of the girls said, mm, this is when she was she was having her her waffle had like uh, f- strawberries and whipped cream or something. And she said, mm, this is fresh. And the script super, the script supervisor said, "You can't say fresh. You can't say fresh." <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, you can't say fresh uh, about. It's a legal it's, thing. Can't do it. Yeah, it, uh, certain like da- the dairy, the whipped cream is not technically fresh. Wow. It's not a word you can use in commercials oh my for God. those types of products. So I did learn a little bit. And they also said, like, with the eggs, you can't say nutritious or healthy or healthful. Or yeah. there's a list of words you yeah. can't say. Yeah. God, yeah. That, yeah. If that's not like a sign of of something <laughs> that we all need to be learning more it's about. It's a massive sign, it Trevor. Is. People just don't <laughs> want to read it. It's, well, yeah. the thing is, they don't realize. Com- that's why I'm I'm on. I'm actually I'm like, OK, look, if I were to take something from this and I know that this IHOP commercial, uh, I, I took what I took from it is. People aren't realizing how com- how how commercials are not necess- They're not educational. They're not based on facts. They're meant to sell the product. Yep. Mm-hmm. They're make they're interested in making money. That's what commercials are. I'm when I get sent voiceovers for things I don't really care about. And if they like your voice and if they like the way you talk, then you get the odd. And then you get the commercial, and you get to say these things that are written by the marketing companies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get fired. For I, this. I work in advertising. <laughs> no, everybody right? knows yeah. this. <laughs> were, you, yeah. were, were you guys ever worried that, that having a channel like this, something so public and outspoken about this, might uh, negatively impact your, your creative careers? Mm, not really. Because, no. I mean, like I said, I mean, I haven't been getting uh, – I, I, I asked them to stop sending me fast food auditions uh, or any meat dairy related auditions. It's really uh, the so, worst case scenario is you don't go out. Yeah. For... But guess what else you go out for? The billions of car auditions. Yeah. Like car yeah, companies right. are like one of the top most, you know, Toyota, Honda, Jeep, everything. Uh, and you get a lot of like, I don't know, random little uh, Ross, Macy's, supermarkets, There's so much more. You'll never be at risk of losing work if you turn down work. There's always going to be something else. Yeah. Mm, I like that that view. That's 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 contrary to what many actors believe, actually. Well, because you get scared. Like I remember when I was when I, you know, quick story. I mean, I I, I went to a casting director workshop and I, I I like heavily burned a bridge with a casting director that I did not mean to do. It was like, I, 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 I double booked myself and I asked if some a schedule could be moved. And there was a miscommunication, I guess, with this casting director's assistant. And they just went ahead and like replaced me without telling me. And like, it irritated. Oh, yeah. Like I basically like, I really upset this casting director, I think, because she never talked to me again. <laughs> and I sent her like an apology card and all this stuff. But you get caught up in that. You're like, oh my gosh, yeah. I burned this bridge and it'll never, the I'll world never is get it back. <laughs> it's like, look, things like that are going to happen. Obviously, don't go through life intentionally burning bridges or, you know, being rude or being disrespectful or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But also don't get so caught up in a, a mistake or maybe it wasn't a mistake. Maybe you did something wrong and now you've learned from it. Like, mm-hmm. it, you know, the, that's the beauty of, of our past is that it teaches us how to behave in the future. You know what I mean? So so don't get you know bogged down in that. Yeah, I remember I used to get so stressed out when I when I messed up. A, like, I don't know. I, I was always very, very precise and regimented when it came to my background work. But if I messed up and if I 
I don't know if I missed a detail, if I didn't bring a piece of wardrobe and someone yelled at me, I'd freak out and I'd be like, oh my gosh, that's it. My life is over. They're never calling me back. I'm not, I'm not going to have work. It's, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's you in a bubble. That's yeah. you in a bubble. Mm. Get out of the bubble. There are so many other things out there for you. Yes. There will always be someone willing to work with you. First and foremost, it's important that you know who you are. That is the number one rule for every actor out there. Know who you are and be honest about it. You know, I'm not afraid to say that I'm a vegan actor mm-hmm. It's anymore. It's, it's, I'm proud of it. And uh, you'll see that people admire that if you say it with confidence and self-esteem and, you know, be gentle about it. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I think the big thing is you don't want to be difficult to work with, but knowing yourself is, is huge. I mean, we did a thing at the, um, the Kirk Douglas theater where I have a, a couple day jobs. Actually, I do a couple different things with that theater and Val Kilmer came in and did uh, citizen Twain, his one man show about Mark Twain. And it was an awesome show. And, uh, he's an interesting character, but we had heard all these horror stories about how difficult he was to work with. And there were a few flare ups that happened that I was like, oh, I think that's what people are talking about. But he was fairly, you know, uh, I've seen worse, I guess I could say. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, but <laughs> oh, I could yeah. I, I definitely he was a good example of somebody who was not afraid to be himself, which was in my experience uh, and just to preface this, I, I like Val. I think he's very talented and, and I enjoyed, you know, sharing a space with him for a while, but he's definitely a little, uh, out there. And that was cool. That was like, that's just who he is. And his talent spoke for itself. And then, uh, and the little flare ups every once in a while, I was like, okay, well, if that continues, then no, but him being a little eccentric or believing a certain thing. Okay. That's cool. I mean, that is a very Hollywood live and let live way to look at it. I know there's other parts of the country and the world where that's not quite so um, acceptable. Uh, But I I think that's the it sounds like that's the main sort of lesson is it? Yeah. Know who you are and don't be afraid of of people trying like people are going to try and always fit fit us in a box. Right. And, you know, and be, you know, as an actor too, be empathetic you know, empathetic means, you know, putting yourself in other people's shoes. And, and also as an aside, that's why I feel like I I feel so much for the animals. I I empathize with them, but I empathize with people too. And I understand where they're coming from and why they say the things they do and why they act the way they do. Um, and that is also very important when sort of uh, being, uh, working your way through this world of, of activism and acting. Yeah. And, and to take it back to what Brian said earlier, just ask questions. I mean, there's no yeah. there's no more disarming thing to do than to ask questions of somebody. Yeah, else. you know, people always feel like talking to you. They do. Yeah. They, they and and you know, they're like <laughs> some of the, one of the questions I always ask people like because I'm I'm always on YouTube. I'm trying to like we literally try to answer everybody's comments or questions or response to threads, everything and. um One of the questions I asked that there was this guy yesterday who was just, I mean, he was expletives, expletives everywhere. He was just really angry. And I was like, I asked him, like, why are you so angry? Like, what, you know, if, if what vegans are saying is bothering you so much, why are you even on this thread? Like, is is there a button we're pushing somewhere? Maybe is it making you think like, what is it? And he skirted the question for a little bit. Yeah. He didn't He didn't quite, he was like, well, I think I said what I needed to say. <laughs> and I was like, no, but seriously, like, I want to talk to you. Um, it's very important that we open sort of the lines of communication there because you don't know, I mean, there are, people, there are words on a computer screen, but there's someone behind them. Um, and you don't know what those people are, are experiencing or going through if they, you know, especially the people who seem the, the younger people who seem very angry and passionate about these issues. Um, you don't know if they've been victims of bullying or if they're having p- trouble at home, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, the internet is also a great opportunity to let those people in and, and sort of get on their side and see where they're coming from. Oh, I love that. You can, use their animosity as a as a sort of you can transmute that into compassion absolutely and sometimes you can't <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes 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 you can't like it just it, it uh we've had that we've had uh that happen on our on one of our videos and um i think i i opened up 
I, I let this guy in a little bit too much. And then he, uh, he just kind of went off and on his own. And, uh, then we had to actually, unfortunately we had to block him because we, we, the comments he was leaving were not PG, let's put mm-hmm. it that way. Yeah. And they were not conducive to, cause we accept, we don't mind discussion. We don't mind people disagreeing. We don't even mind arguments. We don't, yeah. No, but, argue um, with us if you want, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> we don't mind <laughs> it talk. at all. Uh, but it went, when it gets to, you know, where you're not even listening anymore and you're, you're just, mm, yeah. <laughs> what do you when, call it? when it becomes <laughs> just a litany of personal attacks that are filled with expletives on a, on a channel where we, we I mean, we bleep out our own cuss words. Like we try to keep <laughs> our channel very clean. But at, at that point, it's like when, when people resort to personal attacks, I take that as a win because if there, you, if you had a, a valid argument, you would be using it. Hmm. But you're not. You're making fun of my hair. Yeah, and that's a true story. <laughs> yeah, that's a true story. So okay. I mean, come on, your ha- but your hair is so great. I love exactly. your hair. You guys talk about your. I feel like you talk about Brian's hair a lot in the video. <laughs> Actually, both your hair. I like think Anna Brian's gets a new hair haircut. talks on its own. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I'm curious, what if is there uh, an ultimate goal or vision with those annoying vegans? Or is it more of just like a, hey, let's see where this goes? I, I think it's a, hey, let's see where it goes with the caveat of I hope it goes to a place where we can be content creators for a living. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's there's no like t- like we have our own cooking TV show thing in the in your in your on your vision board. It's more like a no, not not in particular. I got that email for this. Uh, it was so perfect for us too. It was like twenty five thousand dollar competition for the best best vegan couples cooking show, and it was a random email. I don't know what where that came from, uh, but I kind of I deleted it because I'm like, no, I don't want to do. I don't want to fit into someone else's mold though. You so you know what happens when that happens. <laughs> Although well, it'd be awesome if the cooking channel. Yeah, had a vegan cooking show and then it would be. But I mean, uh, the thing that I think people might confuse a little bit about our channel Mm -hmm. is that we're not trained chefs. (laughs) (laughs) We we didn't we didn't go to culinary school. We didn't we didn't train for this. It's just it's one of those things where when you go vegan, you have to educate yourself Mm -hmm. on nutrition. You have to educate yourself on on cooking. And and so this is kind of our journey into that of like, hey, can we make a vegan pumpkin pie? Let's figure it out. <laughs> Granted, we will never post a recipe that doesn't work except for exactly. the vegan pumpkin pie, which actually turned into a parfait. But <laughs> well, it's it was still more of a pumpkin really- pumpkin custard <laughs> because we forgot to add cornstarch. We subbed out the uh, eggs but forgot to add cornstarch to mm. thicken it up. That being said, you know, we <laughs> we like to dive into food and, and sort of become aware of what's in your food. You know, mm-hmm. read the ingredients labels. What's in this? Why is it not vegan? And can we take it out and sub it for something that is vegan? The, like you said, you know, oh, there's people out there way better than me, you know, seeing that as like a deterrent. I mean, we know for a fact that there are better vegan cooks out there than us. Oh, yeah. We know that. <laughs> you know, that's that's probably why we have our vlog component to it, because that allows us to tell the audience from our point of view, our life experience and come at veganism from our angle. Yeah, this is mm-hmm. what we make in our little kitchen yes. on a weekly basis, on yeah. a daily basis. This is the stuff we eat. Hmm. It's funny because your kitchen looks big to me on camera. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you've been here, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think it's, I don't know, I think it's perfect. It's, it's interesting though th- that you say that about, about vegans, about needing to educate yourself. I've never met a vegan who wasn't more of a foodie than the average person. Oh, and yeah. and Absolutely. what I what I really like about your channel is that, like you said earlier, vegan cheeseburgers. It's not like you just went and got like a Morning Star cheeseburger and we're like, put it in the toaster, right? Take it out, put right. this, have a heart slice of cheese on it, and then put a button. Like right. you actually buy each of the ingredients separately and and then and then show how to combine them. And and I I one thing the coolest thing I, about my vegan journey from a purely like entertainment standpoint is that I've finally come to understand, really understand, that good food is only about mouthfeel and spices. And if you get those two mm-hmm. things handled, yeah. you are yeah. a master. And it's not hard to, <laughs> to figure those things out. It really isn't. After a few trial and errors over a course of a few weeks in the kitchen, you've got your four or five basic spices that are awesome together. And you know how to like cook the beans right to make yeah. them work well with the other texture, and then 
bam, anything can be amazing. You've got like a whole world of things available to you with just a, time, a few simple tools. Oh, yeah. I mean, get to know your spices because that's all it is. It's spices. It's the spices and the sauces, you know. Yeah. Uh, and we've, like you said, we've found certain combinations that work really great. Sometimes we don't know and we just, we have like a library of spices on our kitchen yeah. <laughs> cabinet and we take one and we're like, we smell it and we go, hmm, do you think this? Yeah, I think hmm. that, that might go. Yeah. That might go. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, oh, we say it. in our videos a lot, like you can't, you know, we'll always say if what we're making, if like you said, Morningstar hamburgers or, you know, we went with our vegan fish and chips, we made our own tartar sauce and we, we addressed like, hey, you can go to the store and you can buy vegan tartar sauce. You can do that. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But here's how to make your own with fewer ingredients, by the way. For and half the price. Yeah. 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 And it's and it's super simple and, and understanding what goes into your food. Not not being reliant on having to go to the store and buy something in a colorful package. You can buy the the parts yourself and and put it together. Yeah, yeah, and I I really love and appreciate that. It, it, you guys have so many positive messages that you're putting out into the world. It's it's really cool also to see it evolve. Like I, I started tuning in. I think you had only had about maybe a dozen videos by the point that I sort of discovered your, your work. And it's just so cool to see you evolve and, and grow. And, and now things are really picking up and it's just a real uh, pleasure and honor to be uh, not only a witness to your journey, but also a small part of it. Cause I get to yeah. sort of, well, thank you know, you. I get to talk thank to you guys you. and call you friends. Yeah. <laughs> you were here from the beginning, man. Yeah. yeah it, it really is so cool. I, uh, I will go ahead and say this shamelessly. I am a huge fan. <laughs> well, thank you. We are fans of you. Uh, thank you. I want to wrap up with the two uh, questions that we ask all of our guests. And I have a feeling that we've answered both of these time and time again in this interview, which has been awesome. But I'm going to ask him anyway, just to, to put a bow on all this. And the first one is, do you feel that this current path with those annoying vegans chose you or do you feel that you chose it? Oh, that's an mm. interesting one. Um, I would say. I think it chose me because <clears throat> the way it was presented to me was out of the blue. There, there couldn't have been a more out of the blue way that 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 e that email. And I wish I had saved it, but I never I don't I, I don't have it. Uh, that email changed my life. And, it, and that whoever that L.A. fitness instructor yoga instructor was at the time doesn't know it but she changed my life and just to refresh our listeners yeah. memories that was the instructor that sent you the link to earthlings when it was available on youtube yeah yes. yeah i i would have to agree i mean I, if you were to hop in the delorean and go back to you know four years ago me <laughs> before i met ana valverde um <laughs> i would have never ever thought in a million years that i would be not only vegan but co-hosting a vegan <laughs> cooking show that that would have been unthinkable to me. And the fact that you entered my life and you you opened my eyes, you opened my heart, you you changed my life. I say this all the time, like Anna changed my life. Uh, I was a vehicle, but honestly, it takes it takes uh, your integrity to do so. I mean, you. Well, I always say that I have to work on changing the world because you've already done so. <laughs> like you can already check that box. Uh, I need to work on it. But I mean, you are. You've. I mean, you've saved my life. Probably. I mean, you've added a decade to my life easily, most likely. You know, just by switching to a vegan diet, and you've enhanced like like my emotional states. You know how I feel, how I think about the world. Like it's all different, and it just sort of happened at a wedding <laughs> you know <laughs> we met at a wedding and how did, i didn't know that my life would change yeah i mean you could argue that we both chose to pursue veganism mm -hmm. but it did sort of come to us yeah not the other way around yeah that's beautiful <laughs> uh if you could take everything you've learned on your journeys from birth all the way till now uh, and condense it down into one nugget of advice or wisdom to pass on to somebody who is walking this sort of unpredictable creative journey um, alongside you, what would that one nugget of advice or wisdom be? I would say we're all on this planet we're together. We're all in this together. 
and um you know, whether we're, we're children or adults or grandparents or pigs or grasshoppers or cows, we're all on this journey together and we're here for each other. You know, um, I would say empathy is such an, an incredible, it's such an incredible thing to cultivate empathy towards one another, you know, especially in a world that's, that's, become so conflict based. Everything's a conflict. You watch the news, everything's, you know, the, the, what's going on in politics, what's going on on the other side of the world and, and terrorism and all this stuff. Uh, and just, you know, being kind to one another and not just humans, animals too. I mean, if we can show compassion for animals, uh, we are definitely equipped to show compassion for, for our fellow humans. I, yeah, I guess I would say that, um, I would go back to the old adage of the, that you hear time and time again of, of older people, people that are sort of approaching the sunset of their lives and this idea that you're probably going to regret the things that you didn't do more than the things that you did. Mm -hmm. And so stop being so if I, if like, if I were to go back and tell me something, it would be like, stop being so safe. <laughs> Explore. So safe and calculated and everything, you know, like Explore life is learn. all about new opportunities and they present themselves whenever they present themselves. There's never going to be a right time for insert blank. You know what I mean? It's like opportunities come along and you can take advantage of them or not. Mm -hmm. And you can, you know, people come into your lives. You can, you can embrace them. You can accept them. You can love them just like go for it, I guess. I don't know. It's so generic to say that, but it's like, don't be afraid. Don't live life through fear, live life through love. Embrace every single opportunity that comes your way. Honestly, like how many times don't we think back and like we remember, you know, it's, we've only been alive for 30 or so years, but I still remember friends from years back and, and I realize the impact they've had in my life and the things that you take, you take something from each person, from every experience uh, and that's really important to acknowledge, you know, just kind of build your library of of life experience. Frankly, find a way to make the world a better place. Yes. Is, that's yeah. That leave it be. leave it better than how you found it. Exactly. Yeah. Amen. That is really what it's about, whether you are on board with the vegan thing or whether you really do just want to sell some Mercedes cars through your voiceover <laughs> or your commercial acting career. It still is about improving people's lives and making the world a better place because there's enough misery and suffering in the world uh, without us contributing to it. So, Yeah, we only have one planet and I know we're exploring Mars and well, whatnot, but yeah, I always Earth say... Earth has way more... Yeah, that Mars thing is not going to work Mars. out. <laughs> I say, let's clean up Earth first, and then yeah. we can work on destroying another planet. No, 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 just kidding. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> it's a lot faster, too, because not only is there nothing there, but it's smaller. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the perfect planet. This is the, we've, we, and we're on it. Like, you know, appreciate it. Look at the, the trees outside, it's the night air sky. And water and yeah, food everything and... that's perfect for us to, to survive with. It's like, amazing yeah yeah well only when it's gone will we realize that i think maybe not i don't know we i just saw and we gotta wrap this up but i just saw this this thing on kickstarter about this guy uh i guess it was john salk who who put you know the guy who invented the first polio vaccine um he published a book a while ago that was about population growth and the sort of s curve that it's taking um, you know, and like, you know, it showed like the past 2000 years of human history and how like, you know, population among humans just like spiked within the last hundred years and, uh, and how we are at this like really interesting point right in the middle of the S curve where population is starting to either level off or actually decrease. And there's a big shift in people's psychological, spiritual state, ways of being. And there was a chart that they showed in this thing. And I'll have to now find this Kickstarter video and put it in the show notes for this episode. But there was a thing where they showed like all the idea, all the ideology that marked everything on the, the lower side of the S curve. And it was stuff like anti-disease and, and that was like the big one that sort of stuck out to me and then everything mm -hmm. on the other side the the top of the s curve and you know across from anti-disease it was pro-health 
And I just yeah. thought to myself, well, that's kind of beautiful, isn't it? I mean, before it was like, let's kill the disease with these pills. Yeah. And, and now <laughs> we're moving into a place where it's like, what if the disease never existed in the first place? Hmm, ah. That's something to think about, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, and then you're getting, yeah, I think like nowadays we're being way more proactive about our health than we used to be. Yeah. I mean, I think even despite the commercials, despite all the, the medications, all that, I think uh, at least here in LA, cause I have to admit, I don't know exactly what's going on in other States. I, I would like to know. Um, and, but LA I know is one of the most, uh, proactive in terms of, of health and wellness and fitness. Yeah. Um, but it's becoming this culture of what you can do to improve your, your, your health, uh, by just, uh, on your own. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I think, Places like YouTube have given these mm-hmm. the the truth a platform. You know, oh, it's really yeah. hard to hide things from people when there's this yeah. thing called the internets, and people can go on there and release all sorts of videos. Some of it not true, some of it true, yeah, but use it has your judgment, use your intuition. Yeah, it has sort of like blown wide open the channels through which people can can be informed. Yeah, it's it's a miracle. Uh, it's the University of YouTube, right? Nobody needs no. to even go to school. You can learn to do anything. Even anything. You can veganize any menu thanks to <laughs> anything on the menu thanks to YouTube. <laughs> to think that literally 20 years ago I was still, I was in middle school typing up on Lyco's web. I, I was like, you know, the oh internet gosh, had yeah. just started mm. in our lifetime and look what it's become. It's insane. Yeah, now we wear it in our wrists. Yeah. Oh my God, gosh. It's, it's I think it's like the one of the I mean, I don't know, the fastest technological transitions that we've experienced in, in human history. Yeah, perhaps. And it'll only get faster. Yeah, the singularity yeah. is coming. If if people want to find out more about you guys, connect with you online, see your work, uh where I, there's a lot of places they can go, but where are the maybe the top four or five the best places to connect with you? I think number one is YouTube. Number one, you know, leave us a comment in YouTube or direct message us on YouTube. Um, check out our channel. That's sort of our number one focus. And it's also the best way for us to interface mm-hmm. with people that watch our uh, show because, you know, Facebook sort of throttles your reach yeah. uh, a little bit. And uh, number two, I would say, is probably Instagram. Yeah. Um, and uh, because Instagram, you know, owned by Facebook, owned <laughs> ironically, by Facebook. <laughs> yeah, <right>. but <laughs> they don't throttle your reach and ask you to boost your post, you know, yeah. as, as unlimited hashtags. Hashtags and... are created equal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, cool. We'll make sure to have um, links to both of those in our show notes, as well as a link to your shop, which was one more time. That was those annoying vegans dot store envy store envy dot com and that's where you can buy those annoying vegans t-shirts which i'm gonna get uh <laughs> probably as soon as we're done recording here as well as um hopefully soon maybe some notella oh yeah yeah awesome. i mean you can just have you can just come over and have it just, anytime yeah, it's in just, our fridge right now just text, you can just text us don't and... ask me twice i've just got my car back from the shop i can come <laughs> right now <laughs> guys thank you so much for for taking the time to sit down and chat this was almost a two-hour conversation and it doesn't feel like nearly enough to talk, I know. talk about all thank the you. things that i want to keep talking about uh i cannot wait to get this out to the world uh, thank you not only for taking the time to chat but also for everything that you are doing in the world it's it's just so awesome so so mm-hmm. awesome we gotta, we gotta, our, our, we gotta thank the animals. They're the yeah. ones uh, going through the brunt of it. We're just trying to give them or make their voices heard. So we're, right. we're, we're a vehicle. Yeah. Last so that's one, it. one last question before we sign off. Uh, what is one resource you might recommend somebody look into if they are listening to this interview and then thinking, you know what, this veganism thing doesn't sound so crazy. Maybe I'd like to learn more. What one place would you recommend they start? Dr. Michael Greger of nutritionfacts.org. Yeah, he's I wonderful. Say, I mean, uh, I mean uh, Dr. Neil Barnard. Dr. Dr. Neil Barnard of the yeah, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. But Michael Greger has all these live Q&As that he does on his YouTube channel. He has all these videos on nutritionfacts.org on their YouTube channel about all of these myths surrounding, you know, meat, dairy, eggs, et cetera. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I would say, yeah, I would say go into sort of the medical research aspect of it because uh, it's it tends to be more tangible um, to many people. Uh, so, yeah, we I recommend Dr. Neil Barnard, Dr. McDougal, Dr. Michael Clapper. Uh, they can all be found on YouTube. They have lectures posted and uh, they're very informative and they're fact based. Mm -hmm. All right. There it is. Well, thank you again, guys. This has been this has been really, really great. Thank you. It thank has. You thank you. This is awesome. All right, guys. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed part three of my chat with Anna and Brian. I so enjoyed chatting with them. And as I just said, we all could have gone for another two, three, four hours. Uh, I love the crap out of them. I think what they're doing is great. And if, even if you're not vegan, just check out the channel, man. Some of those recipes are bomb. I have to say, you know, since I have chosen to eat a vegan diet, the food that I have eaten has blown anything I ever had beforehand out of the water. Just because I've learned to expose myself to new spices and textures and types of food that normally would have been taken up by, you know, a big slab of chicken or a big slab of beef or whatever on my plate. And now it's like I'm experimenting with all these different things and I'm kind of becoming a foodie. And I really enjoy it. I'm really liking it. So check out some of those recipes. They're easy to make, they're affordable, they're obviously very, very healthy, and they definitely support the planet in healing and in, uh, you know, I don't know, I'll go ahead and say it, leveling up uh, the, the consciousness of the human race. So, uh, I hope you guys check it out. That's on YouTube, youtube.com slash those annoying vegans, and I really hope you enjoyed our chat. So that does it for episode 279 of Inside Acting, produced and hosted this week by me, Trevor Algott, with a cameo from uh, A.J. Meyer from Yosemite. Jen Levin is our kick-ass production coordinator. Gadali Gubrek is our kick-ass marketing and web director. Deborah Smith is our kick-ass community manager. Grace Gordon is our kick-ass director of public relations. And Fern Lim designed our kick-ass logo. I went ahead and edited and mixed today's episode and composed our theme and interview music. You can sign up for our weekly email dispatch and listen to all of our episodes at our website, InsideActing.net. You can also find us all over social media and wherever you get your podcasts. And if you've got a minute, if you guys want to do us a favor and leave us a review on iTunes, a positive review there, that really, really helps a lot. And it's also just a big, happy, warm, fuzzy moment for us when we get to read uh, that this podcast thing we do is, is really positively impacting people's journeys. So... If you have a moment, that would help us a lot. Big thanks to our sponsor, Camera Ready You, and a big thanks to you guys, our listeners. You can visit our website, subscribe to our weekly newsletter, get links to everything we've talked about in this episode, and if you'd like, you can support the continued production of this show with either a one-time financial contribution or an ongoing contribution as part of our membership. So that's it for episode 279 of Inside Acting. Thanks for listening, guys. See you next week. And in the meantime... Follow your heart.